dude? Yo, what's good? Hey, come on in. Hey, Primo, long time no see. Sorry I'm a little late, dude. That's uh, all right, man. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. Jesus, dude. And hey, you're looking huge right now. You like that? Yeah, it's not just the lighting either. You like that? I like it, yeah. Yeah, man, it's, uh, I doubled the creatine dose. And then I started doing this thing where I only work out two times a week. Oh, shit. And then I take the rest of the week off. Damn, that's, that's like, that's my schedule, that's but I don't look like that. Yeah. Hey, yo, what's this? That's a sequel. Nothing. Uh, hey, man, I don't want that part of the video to get out, so. Okay, yeah, I'll yeah. delete it, I'll delete it. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. like working for me, right? Money's good? Uh, some days. All right, well, you want to raise? Yeah. All right, I'll play that. I got you, I'll delete All right, it. Yeah. All right, we're heading to Lifetime. Uh, I just joined this gym. It's fucking dope if you've been to lifetime you know uh, i'm going to show you guys five six maybe seven different workouts that you've never done before uh, and if you've done them i'm going to show you how to do them properly and perfect it uh, it'll basically be like one shoulder workout one chest workout one back workout one arm uh, get into that realm of, of what i do and, and, and the unique style of core training that i have implemented over the years because I do believe when you're working your core, you have to have stability in there to tone and firm the muscle. You also have to have contractions to really engrave in the insertion. So you want to do both when you're working abs. All right, so we just got here. Uh, and technically, we're not supposed to be filming. But who, I mean, honestly, who gives a shit? Uh, I'm going to start off with a back workout. We're going to walk over there. I'll start off with a back workout. Show you guys a chest workout, shoulder workout. Uh, and yeah, if any hot chicks are working around next to me, I might change up the routine. So. Let's get after it. Everybody does their rows like this. I'm sick and tired of seeing all that generic shit. So if you got my free gear plan or my free natty plan, I've been offering those uh, through Instagram. You're gonna keep your feet planted. You're gonna grab right here. You're gonna break your form, guys. Everybody, everybody does this. What the fuck is this? You're gonna break your form. Back goes out, and then we finish nice and straight. It's a lot more blood flow recruitment to the muscle fibers. You can obviously go a little heavier. I like to live at 50, 60, 70 pounds max. Shoulders, I have a lot of unique things I like to do. I've never seen anybody do this besides myself. So pick a weight that's 30, 40% your max. Okay, you're gonna pop up. But instead of it being a delt press like this, it's a delt fly, guys. We're opening up, my elbows are directing the depth and I'm pushing up through this through my palms. Now look how I'm going wide, half circular motion. Forearms stay straight, they don't go floppy. Everybody that tries to do this for the first time, it looks like shit. So everything gets directed like this, and I push up like that. Beautiful shoulder workout, okay? Forearms stay straight. Don't let your, don't let your wrists hang either, and that's that. So guys, all these workouts, or at least I should say majority of them are on my free programs that I've been giving out for free. <laughs> okay, super set for chest. We're gonna do this. I'll show you the direct super that I like to do. And then uh, I wanna take us to the Smith machine and show you another unique workout you really don't see anywhere. So incline flies with the dumbbell, right? Except there's a little twist on them. These are hammerhead flies. I don't see people doing these. So this is your regular fly, right? Elbows direct, the depth. Forearms stay straight, except now the difference is we're going hammerhead. I just rotated them, just like this. Boom. Okay. What am I getting? I'm getting more of a stretch out externally on the outside of the pec, or pecs, I should say. And when I bring it in, it feels a lot tighter. Now, if we're going for an overall well-rounded burn, I would go back to here. But if I want to specify, since I'm on gear, I can spot treat. I'm going hammerhead. This is just for a good pump in between. It's not supposed to be too hard, but if you do this towards the end of your workout, this type of superset, it's, you can walk through, bro, it's fine. Just walk through, it's fine. Do that three or four sets, and you get a really nasty pump up top. It looks awkward, but once you do this, it's amazing. I've talked about this on lives many times, so this is how you want the setup. Diagonal with the bench, Call it 35s on each side for myself, 25s for you guys. Whenever I show this on TikTok Live, it always looks a little sus, because I always go like, you have to hold it like this. But you do. So here it is. Both legs on this side. This is really just a back rest, okay? The ring is right here. I like to go pinky on the ring with my front. Little separation right here. 
bring you down, pop up. So I'm also working triceps, but it's an inner chest workout to the max. I don't know a better chest workout. I should say, I don't know a better inner chest workout than this. Exhale at the top. Always exhale at the top at every single fucking workout you do. Okay, so six, seven, I don't know what that was. I didn't even count. That's another thing, I don't count reps unless I'm working like one side. What's the point? If I'm not getting a burn, eight reps is irrelevant. Pushing through the palms. So we're gonna hit forearms. Now, again, not saying I made this up because I didn't, but I don't see people do this. Hitting forearms is literally like hitting biceps except you're just flipping your, your grip. It's the same, you're just hinging your elbow. Okay, so it's gonna look a little awkward and feel a little awkward. You can put your thumbs here, you can put your thumbs on top, but it's just coming up. And I've been getting a mad golf ball in my fucking forearms from doing these all cycle. And honestly, I, I always try to superset everything I do. But like I said, we're not supposed to be filming in here. So we're kind of just running through workout to workout, showing you optimal ways to train certain muscles. The next one I'm about to show you is a bicep workout that I got from Jeremy Buendia, who got from Hanny Rambod when he used to train with Hanny. And you're just isolating. So come over here. This stays here. Okay, and this comes back down. I don't know, I wasn't counting. Five, six. Okay, then you can do bring ups. When you do bring ups, make sure you're starting wide and finishing wide. So for the life of me, I don't know why, but my left rear delt is robotic and my right is just a little saucy. So whenever I do a side chest, I always do my left side. Let's go back to the Smith real quick. We're gonna do a trap workout, a tricep workout, and then core, and then we're done. And I've talked about this on lives. I used to do trap shrugs, fucking like no Smith, just like the barbell off the cage, four or five plates, wristbands, so fucking stupid. Brought upon elbow problems. You don't need that to have big traps. Okay, so really it's just volume. You wanna take good care of your tendons and your ligaments, guys, because as you get older, I'm 31, you start to feel it. Okay, right here. I'm sinking down, I'm coming up. The ab workout I'm gonna show you after this is a similar motion, just more exaggerated. It's a very traditional ab workout that everybody fucks up. This is it, I'm just coming up. I would do three, four sets, okay? Again, eight, nine reps, I don't know what that was. Flip sides, sinking down a little bit, bringing up. Sinking down, bringing up. I'm gonna show you an ab workout real quick. Okay, everybody does, everybody does these wrong. So again, I'm gonna give you an example of what everybody does. This is what everybody does. They cut it short. This is their range of motion. Don't do that. We sink down, stretch out. So I'm exaggerating my motion here, and I'm exaggerating my motion here. So I'm feeling it on both sides. Full range of motion. That's how you work your obliques. Boom. This one is not so much unique as just as, are you doing it properly? So you can do it on the TRX, you can do it with the rope, the overhead extension. But what you want is full range of motion, guys. So if, if I'm right here and I got the rope, imagine this was the rope and I'm just going out here, I'm losing a lot of what I could be getting. If I can go back and reach behind the back of my head and sink with the TRX and then straighten up, probably an extra 30% of blood flow I'm, I'm increasing per rep, okay? Same thing with the rope. I mean, you can't do this with the rope because you can't really just rely on your body weight, but you can reach back and swing it forward with the rope. Rope being if we were over there, okay? So full range of motion. Another thing I like to do, as you know, is I love to superset. Well, what would I superset into? I'm gonna flip around. You can do a three-part a three set with this. So then we got bicep curls. Okay, and then I can do a reverse fly and car carve into my rear delts. You control the difficulty on a TRX, 
So you lean back as far as possible. You control the difficulty. Let's go downstairs, do one more ab. Okay, BOSU ball. Really pivotal part in my ab workouts. We're gonna do obliques and then we're gonna do crunches. So you're gonna plant your feet right here. You have to have this leg, the bottom leg. So if I'm going left, my left leg is gonna be on the bottom. Has to be even and at the very bottom. Boom, right here. Okay, now you don't want your legs straight. You wanna find a spot where you can get some leverage. Slightly bent. Okay, boom, if you're, no, if you're novice to this, you're gonna want this here. You can kind of push off. For me, I mean, I've been doing these for years. We're right here the whole time. Okay, exhale at the top. See how there's slight bend in my knees? Then I would flip. And then I'm gonna finish off. We do three, four sets of these guys. I'm just cranking out workouts in a short amount of time. Now, if you're doing crunches, sit-ups, whatever it is, this is always gonna be easier, like this. It's not for pussies, but it would be nice if you could go over your head. Okay, so this would actually be great to do as a plank. Uh, so I'm just gonna do it as a plank, fuck it. So three ways to do a plank, and if you're rolling your eyes, you're not going to in a second. This is the easiest way, okay? This is the second, this is the intermediate. So this is novice, this is what TNF does, okay? This is what you should try to do. And then if you wanna make it as hard as possible, it's palms open, I'm not kidding. These small little things make a difference. So let's say you hold this for a minute, go into push-up position, and instead of knee drives, like everybody does this, don't do that. So instead of knee drives, it's a flat foot. You're gonna pick up and stomp down. Exhale. It's a flat foot, pick up and stomp down. Now if I'm over here, I get an even better one if I can get some leverage, if I can get some more altitude, and I can go half circular. So now my foot is swinging. I'm getting more of an ab contraction. I actually like this more. I'm just giving you options. And since my foot is just hovering over the floor instead of a knee drive, this is easy. Hovering, this is a lower center of gravity, so I gotta use more strength to control the contraction. Very simple shit, guys. Don't overcomplicate it. Stop watching TNF. More plates, more dates sucks. <sighs> That's it. Uh, I am five weeks into my cut, maybe six. I was using Ozempic for eight weeks. Um, yeah, Ozempic's for cutting, but I wasn't really how should I say, watching what I was eating the first few weeks on Ozempic, I just kind of wanted to get the gist of it, see what it was about. It was my first time using it. Ozempic is semaglutide for anybody that doesn't know. Uh, I started throwing it back the Halo Testin at five to 10 milligrams uh, two weeks ago, three to four times a week. I am drinking a little bit on whether it's a date or you know a weekend, I'm not partying a lot at all, but uh, I have to watch my Halo use, but I love that compound and I run it really lightly. T-ball, 50 to 75 mg, I was using trend at 150 milligrams weekly for four months. And I pulled that uh, last month, literally four weeks ago. I added 100 milligrams of Primo instead of the 150 trend. Okay, so I wanted something to supplement the trend because I didn't want that come down. Uh, my T-ball is at 75, 50 milligrams per workout. Halo testing, like I said, three to four times a week, five to 10 MGs with the T-ball. HGH has been at two to three IUs, I'll fluctuate it. My AOD I've been on for about two to three months. It's a peptide for fat loss. I'm rounding the end of AOD, uh, 400 micrograms a day. I've been working it up from 250. And I feel like I really peaked on AOD about a month ago, maybe six weeks ago. Um, and then I think that is it. Oh, Clen and T3, guys. So that is my current cycle. Uh, what I'm doing for the diet and training is I train six days a week, sometimes seven. I'm not really doing too many two-a-days because I'm not on trend anymore and I do get a little tired, uh, but I have been cranking out a two-a-day when I can. Again, a two-a-day should be a heavy workout and then you go back at the same muscle group, but you go a lot lighter. It's called like a feeder workout, so you flush out the lactic acid, you get a good pump. Um, and then lastly, my, my caloric deficit, three, four, 500 calories uh, underneath, I would say, what I'm, what I'm utilizing. So I eat one to two to three times a day, but as I progress throughout the day, usually the meal gets smaller. Or if I know I'm gonna go on a date or something like that, I won't eat until six or seven. Maybe I'll have an apple or a peach to hold me over. Um, and then I'll have my big dinner and then I'll come back at home, maybe have a 100 calorie ice cream bar, something like that to hold me over. Uh, and then I'll go to sleep. Lastly. It's not what you drink, it's what you eat when you're drunk. Remember that. And also when you're in a good groove, when you are uh, dieting, when you are training, when your metabolism is hot, right? And you know what I mean if you know what I mean. 
uh, fruit counts as half the carb source. Fructose gets burnt like that. So if I have an apple, I count that as uh, 15 grams of carbs, 12 grams of carbs instead of the full 24, 28, however big that apple is, okay? That's your uh, food for thought.